We welcome you to Louisville, Kentucky, inside the KFC Yup Center, where tonight the number four Cardinals welcome on in Indiana State, the Sycamores out of the Missouri Valley. We all saw what the Valley did last night, just 80 miles from here. Evansville taking down number one Kentucky, so Jordan Wara and the Cardinals certainly on upset alert tonight. Alongside Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter. That is the beauty of college basketball, especially this early in the season. Malcolm, anybody can beat anybody. Yeah, and the Missouri Valley Conference over the last 20 years, uh, they're four and two against top number one teams in the country. We got a team on display tonight in the Missouri Valley Conference, the Indiana State team. Uh, Louisville better be on upset alert tonight. Well, the Cardinals may not be number one, but the number four team in the country. What is the recipe if you're Indiana State to knock off the Cardinals tonight? On the road against an ACC opponent, you have to have an experienced backcourt. Indiana State has that, and two of the best players in the Missouri Valley Conference, Tariq Key, led the Missouri Valley Conference last season, close to 18 points per game. He's a guy that can shoot off the dribble, and they must keep him off the free throw line. In his last game, he got to the free throw line 14 times. He shoots the ball well from the perimeter and can use his handle to get to the free throw line. The other player, Jordan Barnes, another guy that can fill it up. Uh, he set a school record, 117 threes made last season. One of the premier shooters in the Missouri Valley Conference. Louisville must find him on the perimeter. If not, he is lights out from beyond the arc. Two great players for Indiana State, but the Cardinals, no doubt about it, have the best player in this game tonight, the ACC preseason player of the year, Jordan Wara. What makes him so good? Well, he's a guy that went from averaging below six points in his freshman year, turned himself into not only one of the best players in the ACC, but in the country. What makes him so special, his ability to put the ball on the floor and create matchup problems. He is a matchup nightmare for opposing wings and bigs. He can dribble and put it on the floor and get by bigs, but he can knock down the three. To me, that's what makes him special, his ability to shoot the ball from beyond the arc. He has become a fan favorite, the ACC most improved player, getting announced in what is a great atmosphere here at the KFC Young Center tonight. Coming from Buffalo, New York, and he has found a second home here in Louisville. It's a tall task for this Indiana State team tonight. Head coach Greg Lansing, he wanted to take his team it's a really challenging environment. He did that at Dayton in the opener. It does not get any more daunting than Louisville. It really doesn't. And you have to go back to 1979, the last time uh, Indiana State is knocked off a top five opponent. A guy by the name of Larry Bird was playing for that team. Um, but they have, though, the recipe, I believe, uh, on the road with that experienced backcourt. If they could control the tempo and then knock down some shots from beyond the arc early on in this game, anything can happen. Evansville pulled through that the other night on the road versus Kentucky. And on the other sideline, Chris Mack. It's almost unbelievable to think this is only the start of year two, and yet Chris Mack has taken a program in turmoil and brought them all the way back to the top of college basketball where they belong. Uh, you have to start putting his name uh, right up there as one of the top five or 10 coaches in college basketball. What he did at Xavier was just really remarkable. Uh, nobody, I don't think, expected him uh, to get to where they are right now this fast. Uh, he has them talking about a potential Final Four run uh, with this unit he has. And you get to see that unit in action tonight. Louisville in white, Indiana State in blue. Our officials tonight, Ramey Steins, Tony Henderson, and Clarence Armstrong. And we are underway in the KFC Yum Center. Tip controlled by the Cardinals. Indiana State comes out in man-to-man. -man. How about that? A steal and a slam to start this game in a big way. Christian Williams. Well, that will quiet the crowd early on in this game. And, and Jay, that's what I'm looking for in this game, how Louisville guards control the pace and tempo and key thing, turnovers. Cannot turn the ball over. 
whether you're at home or on the road. Wara tries a three, hits it. Jordan Wara, he will show you tonight why he is well deserving of that ACC preseason player of the year honor. Yeah, he's just a matchup nightmare. Uh, you asked what made him so special, that right there, his ability to knock down the ball uh, from the perimeter at 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, uh, there's just really no answer for that. Uh, not too many teams in the ACC or the Missouri Valley Conference can match up with him one-on-one. -on -one. Perry, spot-up jumper, it's good. Cardinals two for two on their first two possessions. Well, ball screen defense Jay, is going to be key for both these teams in this game. We're tied at five. Both of these teams, J.B. Bards on that triple, have come out ready to play tonight. The Sycamores, you could say, picking up right where Evansville left off in the valley of the state of Kentucky. And that's just a breakdown. Barnes set a school record. He had 117 threes last season for Indiana State. You can't give him any airspace. Steven Enoch, he has some size inside, couldn't cash in there. And this is Barnes controlling it now, now up to 219 career threes. You have to know where number two in blue is at all times. Open again, rattles in and out. And that's a break by Louisville. You don't want to help off of Barnes on pass down low into the post. The help has to come somewhere else. Uh, Barnes is the one guy for Indiana State you cannot leave on the perimeter. Looking for Enoch underneath. They've gone to him back-to-back -back possessions, come up empty. Well, that's an NBA three right there by Jordan Moore. And uh, he is a guy that just continued to get better. He talked about his numbers freshman year, below six points. <laughs> All he does is go out and average close to 18 uh, his sophomore year and turn him into uh, one of the better players, not just in the ACC, but the country. And that is why a lot of people have the Cardinals in the national championship conversation. But it's not just war. This team has a lot of depth and actually balance scoring when you look at the numbers. Indiana State looking for the early lead. Offensive rebound. That's a concern of Chris Max and a second possession coming for the Sycamores. Open three for Key. He knocks it down. Tyree Key at Indiana State. Sharp shooting early gives them a three-point edge. And that's a second chance opportunity in their last game out. Louisville, they gave up 19 offensive rebounds. Now, they won the game, but that's an awful lot of offensive rebounds to give up. Indiana State capitalizing that time off the offensive rebound, and they're able to bang down the three afterwards. This is what Greg Lansing and everybody was talking about last night and with us at shoot around today, and he said, man, trying to catch the Cardinals sleeping today, but they'll be on red alert after their fellow conference, Evansville, out of the Missouri Valley, got the big win just 80 miles from here last night. Yeah, and it couldn't happen to one of the better uh, guys in the coaching ranks, Walter McCartney. McCarty, really. Uh, one of the good guys, obviously doing a nice job early on uh, with that Evansville program. Posting up Christian Williams, can't convert though. That's a matchup to watch. He has a six inch height advantage. Wara step back three. It's good! Jordan Wara on fire to start this game. That's just an NBA move. I mean, that's not bad defense. That's just a guy that's 6'8 and shooting a step back jumper like he is a two guard. And uh, that's just really uh, tough to defense. To go from a guy who averaged under six points per game to now one of the best in the entire country, what has that growth been like for Wara? Well, really, we talked to him yesterday after practice, and you know, really, I think it's just getting comfortable on the court. That freshman year, uh, it's tough when you get into a conference like the ACC. He got a chance to learn, got his body a little stronger, and then he got comfortable on the court. The talent was always there, but he just got into that comfort zone, and now he is just playing as good as anybody in the country. Indiana State going inside again. That's not the matchup they want, though. Eight seconds to shoot. There's J.B. Barnes on the drive. Floater no good, and Enoch rips down the board. 
Nice job of blocking out that time by Enoch. Extra pass. Pays off. Dwayne Sutton buries the three. A 10 0 Cardinals run. And that's all set up by Wara. Unselfish that time, making the extra pass. And uh, speaking with Coach Chris Mack, he said, look, those are the things that we wanted him to improve upon defensively and then make the other guys around you better. And Christian Williams knocks it down. There's your answer. Louisville's come out shot out of a cannon, but Indiana State, they're keeping punch for punch so far. Yeah, they're doing a nice job getting some steals early on in this game, and then uh, they're knocking down their shots. It's as simple as that. They're executing, and then they're knocking down their open shots. Trying to get a defensive stop. Won't get one there. Darius Perry gets in on the three-point party. Well, he is playing some outstanding ball his last outing. Uh, he was able to put up 10 points, but I think the key number for him, 12 assists and only one turnover. Uh, he is playing with a lot more confidence and playing a lot more under control out of that point guard position. Chris Mack said that was the best game I've seen from Perry since I've become head coach. That one rattles out for J.B. Barnes, and a whistle means we have our first stop in the action so far, but boy, the fireworks have started here in Louisville Cardinals, red hot, up 18-11 early. In college basketball this season, the three-point line, the NCAA, moving it back to match the international line. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you here in Louisville. Clearly has not bothered the Cardinals, they're four for four. They could keep moving it back. Uh, and and for Indiana State as well, too. They're shooting 60% early on. Yeah, you take a look at the details, but what everybody really needs to know, a little farther than match that FIBA distance that you see in international play. But I don't think you talk to the guys, they go, you know what? I see the line, I don't get the, the ruler out, and I just let it fly. Well, as you said, clearly in this game, you have uh, two of the better shooters uh, not just in their respective conference, but in the country. Uh, it's not impacting them, and it's been off of good ball movement. It's not been a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It's been extra passes, dribble drives. Uh, both teams early on in this game have executed uh, really well offensively. Wara and Louisville on a 13-3 run, make it 15-3. He is so good at creating his shot. The difference between a pro and a guy that's an average player is the ability to make tough contested shots. Uh, Jordan Noora is the one right now uh, that is putting on a clinic. Step backs, Indiana State's playing pretty good defense. He is just having better offense. Ryan McMahon pretty good at shooting the three ball as well. He's shooting better than 50% to start the season from deep. You talked about the balance, and that's going to be a theme, I believe, with Louisville uh, throughout this season. It's not just one guy. It's more than Laura. He is a guy, obviously, that is the star of this team, but they have other guys uh, that can fill it up and stretch the defense. Indiana State has gone cold, needed that basket. Great post move inside by the freshman, Trey Williams. You said it, Malcolm. A lot of people on the scouting report obviously circle 33 Wara. This team is deep, and they can beat you at pretty much all five spots, and they run 12 guys. One of them, Fresh Kimball, lost the handle. Off to Wara, fouled, and he'll get three at the line. Well, Louisville has just been on fire right here again. That's just a poor closeout. Uh, you have to close out better on Ryan McMahon. He is one of the premier shooters. You talked about how hot he is uh, right now to start this game off. Louisville is on fire from beyond the arc. The war, everybody talks about most improved in the ACC, but he does it on the international level as well. You mentioned the three-point line. It, that doesn't bother him. He's played at the FIBA level. His dad is actually the head coach of the Nigerian basketball team there in international play. So he's used to playing with the FIBA lines, representing his country, and obviously represents Louisville very well. Well, two things that he had to work on 
uh, that Coach Mack talked to him about turnovers. He had 80 turnovers last season, and then defensively. Uh, he's got to guard his position better. Coach Mack and his staff, uh, Dino Gaudio and Long, they are challenging him to become a better defender. A jump ball, it'll stay with Indiana State. Yet, we talked with the Louisville coaching staff, and they said when he got his NBA evaluation, very little of it had to do with offense. It was all get better on the defensive side of the ball, and you will be a pro for a really long time. And thus, he has come back really with an appreciation and a discipline for it. That's been his main focus. Worked on his body, and then I think the decision making at times. That great defense forces the turnover. Louisville getting it done on both sides of the floor, up 25 13. Seeing why Louisville is considered one of the best teams in the country. They are loaded offensively. Yeah, the balance. We talked about that, that theme. Now, right here, that's not bad defense by Indiana State. Oh, that's just a big time play by one of the best players in the country. Extra pass because they're so focused on Wara. He's unselfish with the ball. Right here, though, uh, those are the ones that they're going to have to live with. Anybody except Wara is going to have to get off on the offensive side. I mean, if you're Indiana State, you sign up for 50% from three, but the Cardinals so far perfect from beyond the arc tonight. And thus a 25 13 advantage. Here's fresh Kimball on the drive, using the glass, and that is why they've got him. Grad transfer from St. Joe's, where he was a three-year captain in Philadelphia. And off to a slow start, but a play like that shows you why Chris Mack was eager to get him on campus. And that's great body control right there. Take the hit, eyes never left the rim, and then excellent finish and touch after taking a pretty big hit. You know, in the era of the one and done, Chris Mack has placed a premium on redshirt seniors like Fresh Kimball. He showed you that three-point package. Everybody who's knocked down a three is an upperclassman for this Cardinals team. A turnover. Call it against Dwayne Sutton. Here's earlier Kimball on the drive. Well, he struggled in their last outing. That right there, though, that's how you get yourself going and get your confidence. Don't settle for jumpers. Drive the ball to the basket. See if you can get an easy bucket. But in an era of one and done where that is all the rage, the Cardinals and Coach Mack, they have placed a premium on those redshirt seniors, fifth-year guys and upperclassmen in this program. Well, because of that rule now, you can get old very quick and get some experienced guys, and that is exactly what Fresh Campbell Kimball brings. Right here, it's a contact sport right here. Now, uh, that's poor defense by Louis Louisville. That help has to be there quicker. Uh, they were working on this drill yesterday in practice. Uh, that's something that they want to limit. The dribble drives on the baseline side and then not have the help there. Uh, they got to get there a lot quicker. You don't want guys picking up fouls because they're late on the help side. Seven to shoot for the Sycamores. Kobe Barnes, a freshman, and the iron very kind for Kobe Barnes. And Jay, that's all set up by dribble penetration off of the pick and roll. They worked extensively yesterday, Louisville, in practice, defending pick and rolls, in particular at the top of the key area. Uh, that's one. Follow flush. Sam Williamson, the freshman, flies in in perfect position. Uh, the freshman showing off the hops, getting on the offensive glass. He is going to be a really good player for this program. Again, he's, any other team, he'd probably be playing 25, 30 minutes a night. But because of the depth, just taking the opportunities while he can get them. Fresh Kimball getting hot early in this game, too. Everything clicking for the Cardinals right now. Well, you get yourself a bucket early, get the confidence going, and in that time, Fresh Kimball with the beautiful turnaround and the lane. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. You're watching Louisville basketball on the ACC Network. Just gave a lot of love to the upperclassmen, but the McDonald's All-American, the freshman, 
the youth movement is here in Louisville as well. Oh, they have found a really good freshman in Sam Williamson. He is a guy that we are going to be calling his name a lot as we get deeper into his ACC career. Great length. Half time showing off the athleticism on the offensive glass. He's got a nice looking stroke. Uh, he is another player uh, that Chris Mack and staff are so happy about and his upside. Muscling that one home, Bronson Kessinger, the senior. Indiana State, they played really well tonight offensively. Won't reflect to the score, Louisville. There's nothing they can do. Everything falling, including that one. Fresh Kimball strikes again. Well, right now, Indiana State having all kinds of problems defending the three-point line. I mean, Louisville, it seems like they have not missed from beyond the arc. They continue to get open looks, and a lot of it off of pick and roll and breakdowns off of dribble penetration. Yeah, the Cardinals are six for six from beyond the arc. Feeling it early in this game. Friday night, college basketball doubleheader right here on the ACC Network. We take you to Tobacco Road. Starts with Duke, soon to be number one. Blue Devils take you on Georgia State. And then right down the road, Chapel Hill, number six, North Carolina, hosting Gardner Webb. Both games right here on the ACC Network. I'll tell you what, looking forward to that matchup. Duke, North Carolina, Cole Anthony, Trey Jones, oh. two of the better guards in the country. That is going to be a fun matchup. The guard play in the ACC, certainly among the best in the entire country. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about it. Man. And we got some good guard play here on display tonight. Perry and Kimball to go along with McMahon, that experience, their ability to space the floor. Uh, they're going to have some tough matchups. I can't wait. Them matching up against the UNCs and the Dukes of the world with their depth. At the line right now, a freshman the Cardinal fans are very excited about. ADD Gahan shipping in from Ireland. And I joked with Coach Mack the other day in practice. I said, look, if I saw him as a 13, 14 year old, I might have to ask for a person because that is just a grown man right there. Uh, he is big finish. Not an ounce of fat on him and another young player that has tremendous upside. They're just a raw athlete and sky's the limit in terms of what he can be for this Louisville team. What a great blend between this talented freshman class and the depth that this Cardinals team possesses. It really is the mix that you would want as a coach where you don't have to rely heavily on young players. And it started with the threes, but the Cardinals, the freshman coming in from Ireland, a flush, and it's all called Cardinals in this first half. Saturday, ACC Network doubleheader. It all starts at 4 o'clock. Duke taking on Syracuse, and then prime time, Louisville and NC State. Cardinals first year head coach Scott Satterfield you have to be pretty happy with his first year you look at that big jump from 2018 to this year and coming from Appalachian State Cardinals fans have to be happy with the way their football team has looked this fall you can see him in action primetime game presented by Geico right here on the ACC Network He's Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter. Cardinals shooting 82% from the floor, perfect from three. They are giving Indiana State everything they can handle. And I think it's been a balanced attack. All eight players that have entered the game, all of them have scored. Uh, they're getting it from everybody. It has been a complete team effort. Defenses look good too. Can't cash in on that turnover though. And you said it, a lot of people will focus in on Wara, but this is a deep team, all eight players in the box score. Yeah, and again, that's what Coach Mack wants, but he gave his freshman a good talking right there. Make the simple bounce pass. We don't need any showtime right now. Uh, bounce pass, simple one, would have led to a wide open, uncontested layup. He's talented, but he will learn from those mistakes. Chris Mack, constantly coaching. I was impressed with how he operated in practice, and I think the big thing for him, 
uh, he got after everybody. <laughs> there was a, no uh, kid gloves for Jordan Wara. He got after him just as much, whether there was a breakdown, whether it was defensively, a missed blockout assignment. Uh, the attention to detail, really, uh, it was impressive in that practice. And it's a big reason why they've had so much success, obviously, Coming from Xavier, they were a constant in the NCAA tournament, and then now he's already got the buzz around Louisville. And they are a team that is right in the conversation for one of the best in college basketball. Their offense has looked great tonight. Mack trying to drill down on the defense. And when we spoke with assistant coach now, Dino Gaudio, but who was actually heavily interested in recruiting Chris Mack when he was an assistant at Xavier, he said, we lost him to Evansville and we played them in 1990. He had a double-double on us. I never saw a competitor like him in the playing game. And he said when he became available, we did not make the same mistake twice. We jumped all over it, and the rest uh, was history. Obviously, he got derailed with some injuries mm -hmm. in his career, but uh, he talked about his tenacity, and uh, he is the same in practice. Uh, believe me, it was intense in that practice session yesterday for Louisville. What's so neat about that is as the Cardinals get an offensive rebound, Sutton fouled on his way to the hoop. What's so great about that is you meet a kid trying to recruit him as a, a junior or senior in high school. Now, all these years later, you end up on his staff. I mean, to stay in touch, stay in such close relation for all that time. It's just a beautiful relationship. It, it carries on to this day in a big way. Yeah, and Dino had a chance to talk with him, our colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago and a guy that's been around obviously a head coach in this league uh, at Lake Forest and uh, he's been around this game a very long time and I think also his staff Chris Mack talks about his staff and the importance of them and uh, Dino what he has meant to him uh, obviously again his experience uh, not just in the ACC but just in college basketball it's so valuable uh, to Chris Mack but he said, I will never forget Chris Mack putting a beat down on us. They only lost five games all year, and one of them made the Sweet 16. One of them was to Evansville. And Chris Mack, that goes to Xavier and plays for him. Ends up coaching there for a long time. And it was a difficult decision, no doubt about it, for him to make that move to Louisville, but thought he could contend for a national championship here. I didn't think people thought it'd be this quick that he would have them really at the top of college basketball like he has. Yeah, I don't think anybody thought that. Again, they thought maybe a five-year, four-year plan, and then you start talking about back-end national championship discussions. Uh, he's got them year two right now uh, really playing as good as anybody in college, and it starts with that guy right there. Gets Jordan his Moore. own rebound, goes right back up with it, and is fouled. And there's Danny Crum. You want to talk about bringing national championships. There are the red sweater to Louisville. Danny Crum did it twice. And that is the expectation for better or for worse. If you're a head coach for the Cardinals, you know what the task is year in and year out. Well, when you think of Louisville basketball and you look at the name on the court, it starts with him right there. Uh, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, just a class act. He still looks pretty good, and it's so great to see him uh, out at these games. And again, when you talk about the elite coaches that ever did it in college basketball, Denny Crump is right up there. Uh, really just a phenomenal career that he had building this program. Deep three from J.B. Barnes, Indiana State. Desperately needed that. They had cooled off in a big, big way. Perry the answer, too much on it. But Jordan Wara couldn't get the finish. He has been in attack mode all night long. He really has been aggressive that time, though, off the offensive rebound. J.B. Barnes tries it again, this time off the mark. He's a fun player to watch, though. He really is, but Louisville, credit them. They've done a nice job picking up on the defensive side. That's why they've gotten space in this lead. Uh, it's all started with their defense. They've done a nice job, in particular the bigs, hedging hard on the ball screens, limiting dribble action uh, by Indiana State. Nine seconds to shoot. 
Here's Wara. Double team. And he just left it short. And that's not a good decision that time by Jordan Wara. That's one where you got three guys on you. You have to give that one up. A charge, and the defense really has been the catalyst tonight for the Cardinals. As we remind you, ACC game day, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern. The huddle tells you everything you need to know ACC football-wise on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Clemson in the college football playoff, trying to stay undefeated this week against Wake Forest. He'll bring all the matchups on the huddle right here on the ACC Network. It's been an offensive explosion. This Cardinals team shooting it better than 70% right now. They do it so effortlessly as well. And one, Dwayne Sutton. The redshirt senior continues his dominant performance. Well, it's been a dominant performance on the offensive side for Louisville. Uh, they are rolling right now up 42-23. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter back with you in Louisville, and Jordan Wara has been terrific tonight. Uh, he's a guy that's going to play for a paycheck when he leaves Louisville. Uh, he is just that good. I talked about the difference between an average player and a really good player, a guy that plays next level, the ability to make shots that are contested right there off one foot, guy all draped over him, nothing but bottom of the net. Jordan War is a has build. He is that good, one of the best offensive players in college basketball, period. He is showing you why he is well deserving of that ACC preseason player of the year. But it is not just War. Yes, he leads the Cardinals with 14, but eight different players, all eight that have touched the floor tonight, have scored for Chris Mack. Well, I, I think the big thing for them, yes, this is a game where we came in, we thought, okay, are we gonna have another Evansville? Uh, they came out with a lot of intensity and matched what Indiana State came out with. I think the big thing for them, the balance. We've been talking about that. Uh, they have other guys that can fill it up, but defensively, they've had a better effort where they've got after it on ball screens and then they contested shots after really a slow start against Indiana State. And some of you may have said, ah, oh, how could you say Evansville, Indiana State, but the Sycamores team, they were actually picked to finish above Evansville in the preseason Missouri Valley poll, so well within reason, but Louisville has answered all questions tonight. Second effort, Stephen Enoch cashes in the 12th second chance point tonight. Well, yesterday in practice, they did a rebounding drill where they basically put a lid on the rim and the coaches did shot and they said, listen, if the offensive team uh, gets a defensive rebound or offensive rebound, you're running. <laughs> they worked on that drill for about 20 to 25 minutes. I think they got the cue. They are protecting the rim and rebounding. Get that out of there, says Enoch, but the Cardinals give it right back. You mentioned the drill, offensive rebounds. Indiana State only has one, Louisville has seven. And it's led to 12 second chance points. Loudest ovation tonight might have been for that Stephen Enoch dunk. He's growing into this game. The big man has played really well, especially in the absence of Malik Williams. But the only thing I didn't like about the block, and I think it's a little old school, but I, I listen to Bill Russell talk about this all the time. Keep the ball in play. Yes, it's an ooh and ah, you block it, but Indiana State got that ball back after the block and they scored. I felt he could have kept possession for his team. That would have been obviously the better play, but uh, can't doubt and question his effort. He has been impressive on the defensive and offensive glass. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, early season in the ACC, Malcolm Huckabee will share his thoughts on how the conference shapes up, which, no surprise, in for another terrific season in ACC basketball. And, of course, we'll show you a first half highlights and analysis all on the State Farm Halftime Report. Darius Perry is going to the bench, but I've been impressed with his play. Uh, talked about his last outing where he had 10 points, 12 assists, only one turnover. I think uh, he might not be the best player on this team. That is going to go to Jordan Wara. But I think Perry might be the most important player in terms of them going on a long NCAA tournament run. 
uh, I think, how he handles the point guard position, in particular when you match up against the Dukes and the UNCs of the world, uh, how he's able to control the pace and tempo of the game is going to be key. With him, it's the consistency. Yes, Chris Max said last game was his best game since he's taken over as head coach, but it's doing that in ACC play four or five games in a row. Yeah, and it not going for the home run play. Coach Mack talked about that with him. He's got the talent to score, but he wants him to make, at times, just a simple play, be solid, find other guys, and I think he's getting that, and he's really liked uh, how he's matured handling that point guard spot. Another steal from the Cardinals. What has impressed you more tonight, the defense or the offense? That right there, excellent play by Ryan McMahon. Getting down, help side defense. They're getting their hands on ball. It has been a team effort on defense for them. The bigs have heads hard on the ball screens. Uh, they've done a nice job against Indiana State. They call Wara for a push-off underneath. You know, it's interesting the cardinals shooting 65 percent from the floor and you say the defense is even more impressive than what has been a dynamic offense tonight well there's no question they're a talented offensive team when you have one of the best players in the country to go along with the supporting cast that he has uh, it's all been about turnovers and then defensively in particular on the defensive glass again we talked about that game against youngtown state uh, they gave up 19 offensive rebounds. That's something that they need to continue to tighten up. But uh, it's going to start with them defensively, uh, how they work as a unit. I think that's going to be key. And Coach Mack has preached that. And we saw that yesterday in practice where their emphasis was on defense and then defensive rebounding. Man on the drive, gets his own rebound, all six foot of him. That's something he's added to his game. He is not just a shooter in his fifth year for the Cardinals. Ryan McMahon, Chris Mack, his eyes lit up when he said, you got to see this kid, how hard he has worked and how successful he's become at the head fake. And I'll tell you what, I would be mad guarding him. He is just so smart. His backdoor cuts, he moves without the ball, and... Uh, they just talk about his tenacity. He's just a guy that is a game changer. The, his ability to stretch the D and make big shots it really just has been impressive to see uh, his progression from freshman year into what he has been now. Well, the number four team in the country, Louisville, you could not have asked for a more complete first half on both sides of the floor than we've seen from the Cardinals tonight. Yeah, and Indiana State, uh, give them credit. They came out, started the game off with a steal and uncontested layup on the other end. Uh, but from there, though, it really has been all Louisville. Uh, they've done a nice job controlling this game with their defense. And yet, always coaching, Chris Mack takes a timeout, wants to talk things over, a great opportunity with four seconds left to just try something in live action. This isn't practice. You have four seconds. Draw something up and see if they can execute. Yeah, and coaches know that uh, there is going to be a point in time in a game, whether it's second half or first half, where 4.2, you got to get yourself a play. Typically, you work on all of these, uh, but certainly with a player like Jordan Wara, uh, the ball is going to be in his hands, or at least he's going to have something to do with a play like this 4.2 seconds ago. But uh, Coach Mack, you said it, he is constantly coaching uh, this team. Now, the Cardinals came in tonight riding a 51 straight home game win streak in the month of November. That's a streak that spans the last 28 years, and it does not look like it's in jeopardy tonight. His first half has belonged to the Cardinals. Three seconds right into Sutton. Got a look, could not finish. But the number four team in the country flexed their muscles in a big way in this first half. It is impressive. Uh, Jordan Wara was uh, as built. Impressive offensive half. Defensively, Louisville did what they had to do, but the three-point shooting, uh, they did not miss in that first half. Louisville, uh, it was a three-point exhibition. Well, it is all Cardinals in this first half. 
20 minutes down, 20 to go. Louisville showing why they're the number four team in the country. Up big after 20. If he's having an off night, obviously he's going to be the focus of most team scouting reports. Uh, but it's the other guys that played well. Darius Perry, you looked at what Sam Williamson, the freshman, came in and gave him some nice minutes. Dwayne Sutton had a nice first half, 10 points, six boards. It was just a team effort in that first half. And if you're Coach Mack and the coaching staff, you have to be pleased with how your guys played in that first half. You mentioned Dwayne Sutton played really well. You said it six rebounds to go along with 10 points. One of four redshirt seniors, and Chris Mack has really placed a premium on those fifth-year guys. Louisville has four of them, and all of them have showed up in a big way tonight. Experience. Yep. Uh, I talked about a lot of teams now with the uh, transfer rules. Uh, you can get old and experience overnight, and uh, that's what he has. He has a nice mix of some talented young players to go along with guys that have been through uh, all those tough contests and uh, that really is a recipe uh, for success and you know that's what he's done obviously all the run that he's had when he was at Xavier he is picking up uh, right where he left off at Louisville great play to start this second half picking up right where they left off feed into Perry for Mora who cashes in well, everything going the way of Louisville. Right now, not much resistance by Indiana State. It's just been too easy for Louisville to score. You mentioned that veteran presence. They've got three fifth-year guys on the court right now to go along with two juniors. And, and they, when you've been through the grind year in and year out, you know that, hey, we're up by 20, but we've got to replicate that performance now in the second half. Cannot take the foot off the gas. Here's Steven Enoch. And they call him for an offensive foul. Right here, this is a nice set play. War draws so much attention, and that's just a beautiful backdoor cut by Darius Perry. And excellent pass by War to find him. Unselfish play. Rolls around the rim. Second effort does go for Indiana State. They've got back-to-back -back buckets to start the second half. Well, hanging around and good job by Indiana State again, getting those second chance opportunities and then being aggressive on the offensive side. But for them to get back into this game, it's going to start on this side right here defensively. Right on cue, Malcolm Huckabee. Sycamores come away with it. And it charges the call. Darius Perry got back, set his feet. It wins the ball back. And Coach Greg Lansing right now checking with the referees to see if he was in that restricted area. But right here, oh yeah, that's a great defensive move that time by Darius Perry. Stepping in to take the charge. Unselfish, giving up his body and referees right on top of it. And actually they've reversed, while we were in replay, they have reversed the call and called it a block. The original call was a charge. They're showing a replay here at the KFC Yum Center. The fans cannot believe it. Chris Mack cannot believe it. Chris Mack is almost at midcourt trying to get an answer for why they overturned that. And that's the third foul called against Darius. Perry, but we showed the replay, Malcolm. You, you applauded it. Yeah, it looked like he was outside the restricted area and that he was there now. Again, from the angle that we had, I'm not sure what the discussion was and why they changed the original call, which was a charge, and the referee right underneath that was on top of it. And that's a big break for Indiana State. Instead of a charge, they're able to get two free throws. So with Perry out, on comes the St. Joe's ground transfer, Lamar Kimball, who is perfect from the floor, three for three. Into Wara, he lost the handle. Indiana State has ramped up the defense in the second half. Barnes a three, rattles in and out. That's a big time rebound, rebound by Steven Eno. Foul called on the drive for Wara. We'll show you that 
block charge call one more time. Originally ruled a charge. They overturned it for a block. And for me, that's a tough call to overturn. Now, the only thing I can think of is that he was moving backwards, but it looked like he got set, and then the player was out of control. The original call, I felt, should have stand. I don't like that change, but wasn't a lot of discussion by the referees. They didn't go over to the monitor or anything. They just changed the call. They're trying to get Enoch going in the post. Can't connect on that hook shot. They have a height advantage there. They really haven't capitalized on the inside game despite the 17-point lead tonight. Foul called off the ball. Right now, Indiana State doing a nice job slowing this game down. They're down 17 points. And Defensively, they've gotten stops, and what that does is it allows them to get out in transition before that Louisville D can get set and then try to get some transition out offense. This Indiana State team won't have a home game until the end of the month, November 30th. They start with six road games in a row to start the season. And you play an arena like this, a really tall task. But they'll be battle-tested and ready Cub Conference play. Tyree Key heads to the free throw line. He's been quiet, but he led the Missouri Valley at scoring a year ago. We remind you, Friday night, college basketball doubleheader. It starts 7 o'clock, soon to be number one Duke, coasting Georgia State. And then right down the road, North Carolina taking on Gardner-Webb. Both games right here on the ACC Network. He gets the second free throw to go, and what a high school career he had in Tennessee. Scored over 3,200 points oh and goodness. broke Tony Delt's record. Great backdoor cut. Oh Wide man. open there for Lamar Fresh Kimball, and he is perfect four for four from the floor tonight. What a beautiful pass that was. So impressed with how Louisville has executed on offense. It's been a team effort, unselfish plays, a lot of great movement off of the ball by the Louisville players. Key, a huge deep three, and he buries it. Getting hot, the junior out of Tennessee. Well, he's a guy, we talked about it at the tip, led of the Missouri Valley Conference in points per game, close to 18 last season. He is a scorer. <laughs> Getting back on defense, Louisville thought it was in the cylinder. It was Cooper Meese who rejected Jordan Wara. We'll certainly take another look at this. Well, first, let's take a look at Louisville on the offensive side right here. This is impressive. A nice little rub screen, and then this is a beautiful pass by McMahon. Excellent movement without the ball that time by Fresh Kimball. Indiana State on an 11-2 run. Key trying to keep it going, hits it again. Tyree Key saying Indiana State is not done yet. He has 15. Just like that, uh, we have ourselves a ball game. Credit Indiana State getting after it on the defensive end and then offensively, Key. Inside, Enoch can't get it to go. A 14-2 run in the last four minutes for the Sycamores. Would have been easy to roll over, but they are giving the Cardinals everything they can handle right now. Underneath, passenger too short. The building trying to urge this Cardinal team on. They still have an 11-point lead, but it's Indiana State with the hot hand right now. Well, for the entire first half, it looked like a walk in the park for Louisville, the number four team in the country. But don't look now. Indiana State on a 14-2 run. Sycamores bringing it in the second half. Alongside Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter. Malcolm, you can't talk Sycamores basketball without talking about Larry Legend. 
Legend. That's all you got to say. That guy earned the nickname, Larry Legend. I can only imagine what he would have averaged if he had the three-point line. Now, remember, he scored over 1,000 points in one season without the three-point line. I know a lot of guys debate about who is the best player and so forth. Larry Bird would have scored in any era. I don't care. 60s, 70s, 80s, and current era, Larry Legend was a bad dude. Uh, one of the best scorers in the history of the game. If you were a defender, is there anything you could do or he was just always going to get the look he wanted? And, and I think the other thing that's not talked about, Larry played in an era where you could hand check. So, again, and the rules now have changed where you can't really hand check guys. Listen, it was hand to hand combat when Larry played. So, for me, uh, he is a guy that would have averaged probably 40, over 40 in college if he had the three point line. And Larry Bird certainly, he is Indiana State basketball. And when you go to a school like Louisville, you have to compete with a lot of guys to get your name in the rafters. But Wara has done his part, not only for the Cardinals, but for the Nigerian national team. His father, Alex, is the head coach. There's dad on the right. And it's interesting, he said, when he shows up for training camp, he's not my son, he's just another player. Coaches him so, so hard. And Wara, last summer, scored the most points in a Nigerian basketball game in a meaningful major tournament with 36 points. So you knew he could score. Now he's getting it done the ACC level, not just the international level. And, and what impressed me speaking with him yesterday after practice was his humbleness. And he talked about his family and the influence that his dad. Uh, he talked about his sister who was playing at Georgia Tech. And, you know, for me, uh, that is the sign of just not only a special player, but a special person. It's really been a phenomenal story. Probably one of the best that we've seen in a while in college basketball, how he's progressed from going from under six points as a freshman to now one of the best players in the country. Shot clock running down, had to heave it, no good. Yeah, dual citizen who, you know, has obviously been great under his dad for the Nigerian team, but, you know, what it means to him to have scored the most points for his country in that uniform, for his dad, it, it really goes beyond the game of basketball. It really does. Just a phenomenal, again, just a great story and one of those stories that just doesn't come along that often in college basketball. Aurora trying to work on his defense, aggressive there, and called for the foul. That's his third. That's the one thing he was told by NBA scouts of the summer he needs to drill down on is his defensive side of the game. Yeah, it really does. And I, I think he has everything that you want in an offensive player. Step back jumpers, we saw that, able to hit tough shots that are contested. He's got NBA range, uh, the one area, and he talked about it openly yesterday, I have to get better defensively. But certainly, you said it, a great head on his shoulders, and it seems like whatever he puts his mind to, he's able to accomplish. Tyree Key trying to stay hot, and he does. Tyree Key has willed this Indiana State team back into the game. He's up to 18 points on the night. He is just a scorer. I mean, he can flat out score again. Led the Missouri Valley Conference in points per game. Put up over 3,200 points in high school. The guy can flat out score with the best of them. And there's your answer. And and one on the other end by the ACC preseason player of the year. And this is a breakdown right here. Key, again, in the scouting report, you can't give him that much airspace. But then right here, this is just a big time move uh, by one of the best. A guy that will be playing for a paycheck when he leaves Louisville. Uh, that is just a tough runner in the lane. Not bad D by Indiana State again, though. The difference between an average player and a really good one, a great one like Wara. Uh, the ability to hit contested shots like that against opposing defenses. And the junior from Buffalo checks out of the game with 19 points to lead back up to 15. Tyreek Key has had the last 11 points for Indiana State. And that's a travel violation. And the Sycamores outscoring Louisville by six in the second half, 17 to 11. But Cardinals still in the driver's seat, very comfortable in this game, leading by 15. Yeah, and they did a nice job, Indiana State, sticking around in this game on the defensive side. Obviously, that big deficit that they 
uh, went in to halftime with. That's really uh, the problem right now. But to start off the second half, uh, they played some pretty good ball. Sam Williamson, the freshman yes, McDonald's uh, All-American, goes high off the glass. Nice finish. Yeah, he is very smooth. Coaching staff so high on uh, what his ceiling can be. Really does a lot of good things offensively as he matures and gets deeper into his ACC career. Uh, he is going to be a name we're going to be calling a lot. Tyree Key fading away, trying to stay hot. Can't get that one to go. And a jump ball. It'll say with Indiana State. And this right here is just talent. Length, little run and hook right there. That's great concentration by the freshman. And uh, speaking with the coaching staff about him, he's obviously going to get stronger. Uh, he has got some great athleticism, things you can't teach. He had the offensive putback in that first half where he showed off the hops. And really, the sky's the limit for him. In a luxury in this system, he's not forced to play right away where some of maybe the freshman mistakes would rear its head. He's able to watch some really talented upperclassmen and take his time early in his career. Two to shoot. Barnes knows it goes up with it. No good. You can run a second unit as talented as this one. McMahon drills the three. The sharpshooter in his senior year has been on fires so far to start this season, better than 50% from three. And that's a breakdown. Again, yes, that's a beyond NBA three, but you got to know the way he's shooting the ball, you cannot fall asleep on him. He's got a quick release, and if you give him that much room, he is going to make you pay. He's 10 of 17 from beyond the arc to start the season. Kimball draws the foul. We step aside. Louisville, 8 of 10 from beyond the arc of the Cardinals. Right back rolling, leading by 20. McMahon paving the way. Cardinals up 20, dominating Indiana State tonight. Alongside Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jalter. Malcolm, what has impressed you so much about Louisville? Well, the team effort and the ability of the guards to move without the ball. Right here, beautiful pass by Wara. Right here, Ryan McMahon, Fresh Kimball, backdoor cut. They're screening and cutting, playing as a unit. It has not been one person. It has been a collective effort and has been impressive all night for Louisville. They go right back to it, a terrific feed. It's Sutton to finish. You know, this team's going to go the distance, and I know it's early, but you said the guard play will really be the difference between a team that has a nice year and a team that makes a Final Four type run. They just need to be solid. When you have a player like Jordan Ward, where he is going to be able to get you a bucket in tight situations uh, to manage the game, but also not turn the ball over and then stretch the defense and they've done that in this game you look at what they've done be from beyond the arc uh, they're over 80 percent uh, from threes and then they've been good in terms of defensively and moving as a unit not one guy it has been impressive ryan mcmahon is on fire another triple like Chris Mack told us he has developed into more than just a shooter, but he's still a great shooter. And that's a quick release, and that's not a bad closeout. That's just a guy that's on fire right now from beyond the arc. Off a screen, pin down, and that is a deep three uh, by Ryan McMahon. Says he wears 30 because of Steph Curry, and he's got a Curry quick release. I mean, look at this right here. This is not bad right here. You're chasing a guy, you come out, and he just catches quick release. That's a NBA three. And he right there looked like he gave him the WWE belt. <laughs> He's 11 of 18 from three this season. Just unconscious. Battle for the ball underneath. And Louisville comes up with it. Jump ball is the call. When you play as well as this, when you got the hustle plays, the, the shooting stroke is down. There's not many teams in the nation that can stop this Cardinals team. Well, I, I think the big thing, and we've talked about this, uh, Jay, is the experience. 
Uh, they played under control. It felt like in that first half that nothing was forced. And, and I think that's the sign of an experienced team and a team that is playing as a unit. I talked about eight players that entered the game. All of them have scored. Uh, they're moving the ball. They're being unselfish with the ball. But yeah, I have to go back to the defense uh, for Louisville uh, and also, in particular, the defensive rebounding. Uh, that last game, again, they got gave up a lot of offensive rebounds against Youngstown State there. They gave up 19. In this game, Indiana State has three. So the emphasis for defense and, in particular, finishing the playoff with defensive rebounding, uh, I think they got the message from their coach. After Indiana State went on a run to start the second half, all Cardinals a 15 to 2 run to answer it. They've got this lead all the way up to 25 points, making it look easy in this midweek contest on the ACC network. Sutton. What a move! Dwayne Sutton all the way with the left hand. Well, he has quietly had a really good game for Louisville. Uh, that right there, nice drive. He's been solid on the defensive end. Uh, very active on both ends, offensive and defensive glass. Largest lead for the Cardinals tonight. Great defense from the freshman, Sam Williamson. Everything clicking for the Cardinals right now. Maybe except that pass might have been the one error that they've had all night. Well, right here, Dwayne Sutton, that's great control. Eyes on the rim the whole time. That is a difficult runner going away from the basket with his weak hand. Uh, he made it look easy. That's a big time move and finish. Jordan Wara back out on the court. He has 19 points to lead the Cardinals. He can't get either one to go. He's been equally impressive for Indiana State. Uh, that one, I think, was a little fatigue right there. Normally, he makes that little putback or floater. Williamson looked like he was trying to pass it to Enoch with too, too much on it. Hit the backboard. He's relentless, though. Led the Missouri Valley in scoring a year ago, and Tyree Key, he will just not back down. That's the fourth foul called against Darius Perry. And he is so impressive. I'm speaking with head coach Greg Lansing about his game and his ability to score. We've been talking about how he played in Missouri Valley Conference with one of the better mid-major conferences uh, in the country. And, and I just go back to his high school days. And you score over 3,200 points. Uh, in high school, uh, you know, I don't care what the vision you're at, you know that you know how to score the ball. And uh, he has turned into one of the better players in the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah, he's up to 20 tonight. How does a game like this help the Sycamores going forward? Sure, really tough opponent. You knew that coming in. They go and they've dominated you offensively. But what can you take away the rest of your season? Well, I think they have some spurts where uh, they made it interesting to start off the second half defensively um, but look let's face it they're going up against one of the best teams in the country and the Missouri Valley Conference um, look they're just trying to get ready for conference play so I think you can take some good from this plays like that hustle plays where guys are making good defensive efforts and yeah, Louisville one thing's for sure they came to play looking to extend that home game win streak in the month of November to 52 Still eight minutes to go. Here at the KFC Yum Center, Louisville has rocked this crowd all night long. And you look at those numbers, Malcolm. Nine of 11 from three, shooting 63%. When this Cardinals team is this dialed in offensively, they will be very tough to stop. Yeah, they really are. They have all the pieces in place, a balance on offense. Uh, you have one of the better players in the country. Uh, I think their guard play, again, that's going to be, for me, the key theme, question mark. Um, 
one thing that stands out, though, and I think it's something that needs to be tightened up, are the turnovers. Uh, they've had 15 turnovers in this game. As they get into ACC play against the North Carolinas of the world, of the Virginias and the Dukes, uh, they're going to have to cut down on their turnovers. Indiana State, his first action of the night, the junior Christopher Agbo. What a story this is. Comes in as a transfer from Pearl River Community College. He has not seen his family in five years, native of Nigeria. And it's funny, he has a close relationship with Wara. The Wara family, really, is his dad. Jordan's father, Alex, the head coach of the Nigeria national team. He actually called Christopher to say, hey, we could use you as a player this summer. And he said, you know what? I have to focus on Indiana State as much as I want to play for my country like Jordan does. Got to focus on becoming a better basketball player. And he is so impressive. We had some fun with him uh, speaking his five languages, a very uh, intellectual young man as well, too. And uh, he is a guy, too, that they're going to rely on as they get into Missouri Valley Conference play. He is a big body, a guy that can uh, take up some space down low. You see him posting up there. He, I mean, he's built like a football player, like an outside linebacker. Six foot eight, 275 pounds, not an ounce of fat. Shot clock running. He has to heave it. Almost went, rattled it out. But a great young man and certainly a bright future in front of him. He's getting back on defense, a foul called. There's head coach Chris Mack. Cannot believe it. Year two with the Cardinals. He has his team ranked in the top five to start the season. The rebuild really only took a year. It, it just, I mean, he's a winner. I mean, you, Xavier. Uh, what he was able to do there and then now at Louisville. Um, we saw the attention to detail yesterday in practice, um, going over every facet of the game with his team. And uh, it's just a different buzz around here right now. And he knows and he embraces the expectation uh, at Louisville. It's not about just getting to the tournament. Uh, they expect to be competing for national titles. That is the standard uh, that Denny Crum set, who's sitting right behind us. Uh, they don't expect just to get to the tournament. Uh, they want to go deep into the tournament and then be in contention uh, for titles. And it's one of the all-time great stories, really. Chris Mack, in, in 1993, he is coaching junior varsity girls basketball in Cincinnati after he tore his ACL for the third time, ended his playing career, he said it's been a long road, but a road he's grateful for every stop along the way. Even JV girls basketball has made him the man and the coach he is today. I mean, just a ridiculous story. I mean, just to think about, and I joked with them yesterday, I said, you know, just could you stick back and think about this ride that you have been on uh, going from a guy that was coaching your JV girls basketball to now uh, one of the storied programs in college basketball. And, just gave me a smile and he just said look it's just been a, a lot of fun and uh, for him it's about these young men uh, the young men that he's able to coach and, and shape their lives not just about basketball but uh, after basketball as well too uh, just a really remarkable story what would you say is his best quality as a head coach the attention to detail but i think also getting after everybody again he was on a warrior yesterday in practice um, your star player sometimes uh, you get let guys get a little loose uh, he was not letting up he was in him just as he was this young man right here Sam Williamson who continues to impress uh, I, I think the attention to detail all the little things on both sides uh, that's the reason why he's been so successful and what a roster he's constructed this season we talk about the veterans the depth the redshirt seniors but right now you're up by 30 points and you have the ability to put three freshmen on the floor all at one time Saturday, doubleheader right here on the ACC Network in college football. First, Duke taking on Syracuse. Gets you started at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And then Louisville hosting NC State. ACC Network primetime matchup. The Cardinals very happy with first-year head coach Scott Satterfield. They're getting it done on the basketball court. They're getting it done on the football field all as well in the Louisville Athletic Department. And the 
Team Mom, as they call her, for Indiana State, uh, Vicki Wager, uh, she sets up all the meals and all the communication for these players, and she's done a great job with this young man at the line, uh, Christopher Agbo, uh, where he hasn't, you talked about, he hasn't been able to see his family uh, for close to five years, and uh, she's been able to set up communications uh, with them, and uh, certainly, again, they've embraced that young man and made it uh, like a second family for him. Well, she has become that family as well as the Sycamore basketball team has, but that's such a commitment for a, a young man to make so early in his life. It really is, and it's uh, one of the things that I have an issue with with the NCAA in that situation. Uh, the school should be able to allow uh, that young man to have his family uh, come and see him do what he's doing right now. And Agbo, he's come on and played really well in this second half. He's got six points. It is perfect from the field so far. So a shot in the arm from the Nigerian native. Playing his fellow countryman Jordan Wara tonight. That's fresh, but Quinn Slazinski off the mark. Offensive rebound picked up by the Cardinals, but might have stepped out of bounds. Actually called for the timeout, so we will step aside. Cardinals have this one well in hand. They've scored more than 80, and they're not done yet. When you're up 28 points, and You've got a little more than four minutes left in the game. This is the portion of the contest where you could look ahead. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. No big names on the schedule upcoming in the next couple of weeks for Chris Mack, but an opportunity to continue to find his best rotation and get a good mix for these players. Well, as we found out the other night, Kentucky, uh, a lot of folks might have been looking right. past that game. Uh, look. Again, that's the beauty of college basketball now. When you look at that schedule right there, do you expect Louisville to have any uh, speed bumps in the road along the way? No, but uh, you cannot fall asleep again. College basketball, that's when it's at its best, when you have those mid-major teams come in on the road and see if they can execute. But uh, thus far, Louisville has answered that call against Indiana State. And all three of those games come to you right here on the ACC Network. You look up and down almost every night. There is a must-see team on this network. What a luxury for college basketball fans that you get to tune in. You get Duke and North Carolina both on Friday night. Does not get better this for an ACC or a college basketball fan. How about Roy Williams? I think he's underrated uh, as a coach. We step aside for the final time. It's all Cardinals as we head down the stretch. Everybody focuses in on Jordan Wara, but they have shown tonight the Cardinals have a balanced scoring attack. Well, right here, uh, one of the best players doing his thing, but it was more than Jordan Wara. You are correct. Right here, Fresh Kimball, take the hit, beautiful body control, finish, and then right here, talented freshman, a guy we're going to be calling his name as his ACC career progresses. But this right here was impressive all night long. Four players were in double digits. Uh, it was a complete team effort. Uh, they put on a offensive clinic. Louisville did throughout this game. Uh, it was just impressive. Clinic really is the only word I can use. The ball moves left to right. Guys were unselfish, and then they moved excellent without the ball. Now this was expected. Chris Mack returned six of his top seven scorers from a year ago. You had Fresh Kimball, who was a three-year captain at St. Joe's, their best player in the 8-10 for the last three years. You had him to the mix, and you have so many guys who on any given night are capable of putting up big-time performances. And tonight, the coming out party for Fresh Kimball. and shoot around where where does he get the nickname fresh and he actually said people call my dad fresh because of how well he dressed so he just becomes fresh junior he's had to live up to the fashion icon that it is is his dad well i'll tell you what that reverse layup he just had was pretty fresh and uh, fresh <laughs> playing him was a, a pretty good game but i really enjoyed our time speaking with that young man
Uh, and what a, a career move for him as well, too. The career he had at St. Joe's and now be able uh, to move over to Louisville playing in the ACC. And uh, he's on a team now that's going to be in contention, uh, not just for an ACC title, but also a national title. Said he chose the Cardinals for exactly that reason, to win a national championship. And you said it, pretty fresh. Yeah, with a nickname, he lived up to it right there. That's a nice little reverse. Body control on point, but for me, eyes on the rim the whole time. That's a difficult shot, and fresh made it look easy. And this, I think, Jay, was a good a bounce back for him. He didn't play well the last time out uh, for Louisville. Uh, obviously, he's not asked uh, to be a guy that's going to average 18 points uh, and be the main guy as he was at St. Joe's, but uh, be solid. And I think he had a solid game tonight. Defensively, he was sound, and then he made some shots uh, when he had his opportunity. Great defense and hustle from the freshman Josh Nickelberry. Ball goes to Indiana State. Well, you ask coaches whether you're up 30 or down, you want to see guys hustle plays like that. That will get you minutes. Uh, that will. That is how you get recognized by coaches. Those are those hustle plays uh, that they crave, and that's how you get yourself minutes. Uh, Chris Mack loving that. Such a competitor. This game is well in hand, and Chris Mack fired up for a big play from his freshman. Shot clock violation, Indiana State didn't realize it. Louisville basketball. We remind you the huddle coming to you Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on the ACC Network. The guys take you through every game on a stacked Saturday slate every weekend. It's the huddle on the ACC Network. That's the first miss of the game from Fresh Kimball in what has been a coming out party for the Philadelphia native. He born and raised in Philadelphia, went to high school at Newman Garetti, played at St. Joe's, who stayed in Philadelphia. So I asked him today, this is really your first time out of the city. What, what do you make of Louisville? He goes, nah, they got bridges, just like <laughs> Philadelphia. They got buildings. It, they got food. It's not much different. It was just, and, and that's what you, it was just like a veteran, you know, a veteran answer. Like, yeah, I'm not that phased by it. It's just, hey, it's another city. Uh, they have some of the same things that uh, I had in Philly. I'll, I'll adjust it. Uh, boy, he adjusts uh, in this game tonight, I think, to go along with the points. Yes, he was in double digits. Uh, yes, he had the four assists. But for me, uh, I think the big thing for him, uh, one turnover in this game. Uh, he played a solid game uh, for Louisville, and I think that's going to be his role uh, as they get deeper into ACC conference play. No cheesesteaks, though. Yeah, I was going to ask him about that. What's the uh, you know what's the spot that you have to go to in Philly for the best cheesesteak sandwich? Do you have an answer? I don't, and I've had a couple of games uh, at Temple. You gotta Jeep. find that out. I'm gonna have to ask him. Next Louisville game I get, okay. that is gonna be my first question too fresh. Usually it's Geno's or Pats. That's you're either a Geno's or a Pats. They're like right next to each other there in Philly. This has been all Cardinals. What has impressed you most about the number four team in the country tonight? Uh, their balance. Uh, we talked about it with that graphic as we take a look at uh, Another impressive freshman, the Aegon getting in, but uh, their balance. Uh, it's not just one guy. Uh, they obviously have Aurora, who is a guy that's going to be talked about all season long for player of the year in the ACC. But uh, the other guys, I think their balance on offense, defensively they were sound, and uh, they can hit you in so many different ways on the offensive side. And the hustle to the final whistle, too. These guys are up 30, but they're competing like it's a tie game. So on a your last night, 80 miles down the road in Lexington, the number one team stubs their toe against a Missouri Valley opponent in Evansville tonight. The Sycamores come in 
trying to do the same thing, and Louisville just took care of business from the very beginning. And last night, it, it serves as a reminder that it's not easy. You still have to show up and out-compete and get the better of your opponent. But Louisville has done that in a big way tonight. Well, we were at the practice uh, before uh, that Kentucky score came in, and I'll tell you what, it was intense. Chris Mack was getting after guys yesterday afternoon in the practice session that we were able to see. And, uh, these coaches know, look, uh, whether it's a Missouri Valley Conference, we talked about uh, their numbers, uh, uh, their record uh, against top five opponents, in particular uh, number one opponents in the last 20 years. Uh, there's some dangerous teams out there. These coaches know that uh, as you take a look at Greg Lansing. And, you know, so they did not take Indiana State lightly. They know the history. Uh, they know their experience with their backcourt. Uh, they had a few scares in it, but I think Again, with that balance and the veteran leadership, uh, they were able to take care of business. In a big, big way, and it started with Jordan Warren at 12 of the Cardinals' first 25 tonight. He finishes with another 20-plus point performance. All three games so far for the Cardinals, the ACC preseason player of the year has scored more than 20. to mention the chant for the folks that stayed to the very end. They are chanting, we are not UK. You know that <laughs> rivalry in a big way. Oh, I tell you, these fans, are they are some of the most knowledgeable fans. That's pretty clever right there. And uh, they knew the history, obviously, the Missouri Valley Conference, but uh, that is a clever, clever chant. 29 point win, a convincing one for Chris Mack and the number four team in the country, Louisville 91, Indiana State 62. Uh, I think the ACC, uh, again, I would not be surprised to see uh, a Louisville, a North Carolina, or a Duke, uh, or a Virginia for that uh, matter, uh, win another national title. They're just very impressive, balanced offensively. Uh, and they have a star in Jordan Nogwara, uh, one of the best players in college basketball, period. All four of those teams ranked in the top ten right now. Duke likely to be number one when a new poll comes out next week. And you can catch all those teams and every team all season long right here on the ACC Network. For our entire crew, my Mackay, Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Louisville. Cardinals win big, 91 to 62.